I'm sitting here in the training room with Tania. She's asked me to come in and answer a couple of questions. So, Tania. Tell me where City Branch was ranked when you took over. Okay, so City Branch was ranked at number 35 in the company when I took over. It was a big step backwards for me because I'd actually been at Milford Branch. So to take a step back and go back down to number 35 was a pretty scary thing to do. And even to this day, I sometimes look back and especially in the first few months, I look back and think, you know, what was I doing? What was I thinking? You I must have had a vision, <laughs> Sandra, did you? Um, it's funny, you know, because I was sitting there talking to Chris about it not long after I'd actually got appointed to the job. And he said, oh, Sandra, you love the challenge. And you know what? I do love the challenge. And City Branch has been a massive challenge. And if I'd really realised how much of a challenge it was, um, I might not have actually applied for the job. You might not want to put that in. Um, but um, if I'd realised what a big challenge it was, and it was a huge challenge because there is a lot of uh, dynamics at play at City Branch. But um, I have loved every single step of the way. Yeah, congratulations on becoming number one. Of course we want to Thank know you. what you did. Okay. So I got really, really clear in the first four months um, after I arrived at the branch what was important. And at City Branch we have very high overheads, so turnover was going to fix everything. And that was something that Ian Gray said to me. He said, look, don't worry about the P&L, that's Chris's job. You just need to worry about getting people in there who are going to sell real estate because turnover fixes everything. And he was absolutely right. So I knew I had to recruit. And honestly, I spent the first two years recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. So you looked for people with energy. What else yeah. did you look for? Okay, I'm pretty good at spotting talent. It's um, one of my talents. Uh, it, it, and it's a really hard thing to pinpoint what it is about those people that you think have got talent. But I do also look for people that have worked um, when they were young at, at high school and at, when they were at university, if they went to university, I actually don't care if they didn't go to university, as long as they had some sort of track record of working because it showed me that they had a work ethic. And if you've got a work ethic and you've got great energy, bang, you've almost got the ingredients to put somebody into a, a, a sales role. And as long as you've got the time and effort to nurture them and give them the tools and the skills to teach them how to sell real estate, you're off and, and you're winning. So I had a couple of criteria that I looked for. Everyone's talking about your database management system. Yeah. Tell us a bit about that. Okay, so the databasing is the big, big, big deal for City Branch. We started it at Milford. I was doing it myself when I was selling, so I already knew the value of it. When I got to Milford, it was the first thing that we did. Sat down with every single agent, and every agent got a database, and we started emailing, and we also started posting newsletters out to them. So we, that was a huge part of the success at Milford. As soon as I got to City, I knew that that was an important thing to do, so we started that process. It took a long time because there was a, a big team um, at, Mil at um, City Branch, and so it did take time. It was around probably 14, 15 months in before we really had every single database up and running. So we run a database now of around 28,000 people which receive an email once a week from us and that email goes to each agent's own personalised um, database and it's from that agent personalised. It is not a branch database e newsletter and it's not a branch database, it's everybody's own individual one. We gather that information out of Daybook and out of their Gmail contacts. We put it all together, we washed it up, and we created a e-newsletter. So the first one that we sent out was always about, well look, you know, if you don't want to hear from us, just click unsubscribe. And then we had a very low unsubscribe rate, so we felt quite confident. We have a very high open rate, which is at around 42% and we keep it relevant, uh, we keep people informed, it's not always just about real estate, it's about other things that are going on in the industry, and um, obviously we keep it um, on the basis of building relationships with people, but it is vitally important to the success of the branch. How did you manage the reticence that you would have got from salespeople about sharing their contacts? Oh yeah, sharing contacts and you know the agents were really scared that oh but I might have the same email address as this person and there's going to be this whole you know mishmash of people and they're going to be receiving 10 emails. It just didn't happen. Um, there was all this fear around you know the security of the um, data and but these were people who'd never even had a database to begin with and all of a sudden they became really scared about the security of their data. So it was quite interesting to see how it played out. 
but I can assure you that we had, a, like I said, a really low unsubscribe rate. We had maybe 10 double ups and you know what, those people will choose who they want to get the email from if they're getting more than one and they'll unsubscribe to the one that they don't want and they'll keep the one that they do. So although that there, there was a little bit of fear there, it was really just fear of what they didn't know. And as soon as they started getting this sort of, you know, thanks for the email and building the relationships and all of a sudden new listings started coming in, they saw the value of it. So have you got a particular story where it really worked well for someone? Yeah, there's a really um, interesting story about someone who came to the branch who had been selling real estate for quite some time but had never had a database. Um, and we got that all set up for this person and she was still a little bit, you know, doubtful about the whole thing to be honest. But anyway, we sent out the first one and on her first email that went out she immediately got a response back from someone saying I am so glad to hear from you honestly she said it's so weird that you've emailed me today because only two nights ago we were thinking about selling an investment property that we own in Remuera it, it, she was just so shocked that it happened so fast I knew that it happened that fast because I've seen it time and time and time and time again where people have been out of communication with someone and then all of a sudden they start communicating and the relationship starts building back up again. So, so this person is now a total convert, a real advocate for the databasing and her business I think doubled in the last 12 months purely and simply because she is now really leveraging off that. Putting targets in place and then just following through. Yeah, look, and the one thing I'd just like to close on is that we, as branch managers, we are sidetracked by a lot of stuff. Uh, stuff gets in the way of our job. You know, we're accountants and lawyers and counsellors and, you know, we're just about everything. Um, but I have really made it my mission to stay focused on what I believe is important. And that is having high level communication with my team, because without my team, I'm nothing. So, you know, although sometimes I feel like I get 200 emails a day, I have to tell you, I've got like 56,000 unopened emails in my inbox. I don't care. My team are the most important thing to me. And if I'm not staying in communication with them and providing them with the support that they need and constantly looking for ways that I can help them improve their business, then really what, you know, am I doing my job as a branch manager? Because that to me is what I'm there to do. I have an infrastructure behind me of people who support me and I'm really, really fortunate in that regard. I truly believe that sales managers are the way of the future. If you don't have one, get one. They'll help you with recruitment. They'll help you with time management. They'll help you with closing deals with new people. It's just like there's just so many great things about having a sales manager. Um, and, and But just stay focused on what it is that's important. Recruitment, high level communication with people. And that's the key.